Thank you, Rob, to be here in Geneva. Thank you. You travel a lot, I guess? A certain amount, yeah. Do you have uh, time for uh, working on your own uh, community? Yeah, I do. I, I think I travel less than sometimes people imagine I do because I have young children and I like to be at home and I'm involved in some projects in my town that I'm very attached to. But at the same time, uh, yeah, I do get a lot of invitations and I really enjoy it. I love going to see what people have done with the idea that, that we started. And I think it really, it's often something that's really meaningful for people to be able to say, I was inspired by reading your book or by Transition and I really want to show you what I've been doing. And that means a lot to people, I think. Yeah, and and uh, what do you think uh, about the, this event in Geneva and what we did in the, what we are doing in the Friday of Transition and all the, this transition movement that you can see here? It's wonderful to, to come here and to see, you know, Transition looks different everywhere. Transition is not like a, a Coca-Cola franchise. It's not like a, something that looks the same everywhere. It's something which very much is from that place and is of that place. So it's lovely coming and seeing how it's, how it's being done here to see how the Transition Group are working with the local government and those relationships that are being built. And also to see how the, how the film Demain has has taken some of the strangeness off this stuff. You know, I think before Demain, you know, maybe me coming and saying, we need to look at our economy differently and more local, people would think I was a very strange person. I think now Demain has kind of made these ideas much more mainstream, much more acceptable, and we see more and more people coming. There were so many people there last night, really good attendance today. I get the sense something is really growing and that's really exciting. Thank you very much. We try with the Lemon, which is the, the currency of, uh, G and of the G Geneva Lake region, to be uh, cross-border. Have you seen other experiences of this type in the world? Or you... I think there's something that you're doing with the Lema, uh, the Lema, which is really interesting and really pioneering. Bringing the mutual credit together with the local currency, having an electronic-based version of that, Uh, and all the different work that you're doing, I think, you know, you're, what, what I love about local currencies and about transition in general is the way that people are inspired to start a project. So they look around and they see what's already happening and then they learn from that and then they say, we can improve. So every new project is an improvement on ones that have gone before and that's really exciting. So what you're doing is you're taking it another step forward and that's wonderful to see. Thank you. We try to make a crypto uh, currency uh, project. We, we, we have it now. And uh, the idea is scaling up. What do you think? And I'm working in the, with the World uh, Democratic Forum in the idea to scale up some local uh, new economy. What do you, uh, how do you think is it possible to, to make the networks between us and to make it scaling up rapidly? I think the scaling up works not by taking a few projects and making them enormous. You know, so if any of the projects I had started in transition became the new Coca-Cola, the new Apple, you know, I would think something had gone very wrong. You know, for me, actually, what we need to be doing is growing some of our initiatives, absolutely, but we need to be growing them with a sense that there is a, there is a right sort of size, there is a right kind of a scale. And the thing that we really need to be growing is complexity and relationship and connection and, and, and invitations for people to step in and be entrepreneurial, to create new things, to move their money from investing in the old economy into the new economy. So for me, you know, traditionally in our old economy way of thinking, when we talk about scaling up, we just imagine things have to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Actually, I think in the new economy, things need to become more and more and more complex, diverse and connected. Yes, I think we completely agree. We We know that the small is beautiful, which was the, the, the title of a famous uh, book, yeah. and that we have to think uh, globally but act locally. So we are, we are the same in the same purpose with the Le Mans and with the Cartier Collaboratif and uh, with the spirit of the Colibris and the, the movement of, of Alternativa against the, the climate change. But we have sometimes to act globally. What do you think we could once 
act globally too? Well, I think, you know, particularly given the recent developments in the US, uh, you know, we need to be having a, you know, I sometimes, I start my talks now by showing the, the when Greenpeace hung that banner behind the White House a few days after Trump was elected that said resist on them in big letters. I think if I was able to make that banner a bit longer, I would also add a rebuild and reimagine to that as well. Uh, and so we need the resistance, absolutely. And I think we are seeing a really interesting coming together of really diverse networks and campaigns and organizations to provide the kind of resistance that we need to the to the neoliberal kind of Donald Trump agenda. But at the same time, we also need to be rebuilding, uh, reimagining, and that works best, I think, at the local scale. So for a lot of the time, people are involved in transition. They work in their local communities doing transition, and then they're also involved in campaigning uh, globally against things. So it's not an either or. I think we have to do both. And then what are the, the next step we could um, think together uh, to develop lo locally what we are doing and to develop globally what we are doing? I think in terms of thinking globally uh, and locally, one of the key things we need to be doing is, is joining up the bottom and up and the top down. So what does it look like when local communities harness the power of their local government and local business to really drive this kind of process forward? How do we move from investing in the banks, investing in, in massive distant things, to investing where we are, into our local uh, economy, into community energy projects, into local supermarkets, into the local food economy? And then I think we, st we start to see a, a meeting of the, of, the, of the global and the local, where the role of the global is really to serve what's happening at the local, that the ideas, the innovation is coming from the local scale and the role of the things, other things is to get behind that and to support that. We start to move to an economy which is more, more local, more resilient, more decentralized. We still have uh, national governments and we still have those networks, but their role is really to support the innovation that is coming from the, from the ground up. Uh, some people among us think that it's a good moment now to launch uh, Lemon in Transition which is a region, it's not a city. You, uh, you was the, one of the beginner of the, the, the towns in, 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 in transition, what do, the transition town movement, what do you think about that? My sense is that, it is that, is that starting, a, starting transition in a region is kind of the wrong way to go about it because the, the model of transition is very much about the, 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 the dynamism and the engagement and the power uh, of local communities. So what usually happens is when transition has, has spy, inspired lots of communities to start doing transition, then there is a need for a regional network. And that, that, and that sort of that self-organizes. And they get to a stage of thinking, it would be really great if we had a regional network <clears throat> where we could share our learning, we could work together, we could be better represented. If you build a network first, there is a danger that all the energy goes into the network and you have no transition groups on the ground. You could imagine something where that regional network's role is to inspire and support the emergence of new transition groups, and that can work. But I think that at the beginning, the best thing to do is to try and inspire people to form groups, to support them, make sure they get the right training, the right resources, to be able to start transition, and then the regional network will, will emerge in time. Uh, I do agree. We are um, developing the Lemon. We have now... Uh, uh, exchange uh, places in Genève, in Lausanne, in uh, Tonon, in Evian, and uh, we are, we, we are uh, in all the, 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 the Geneva uh, Lake region, and we, will, we, we know that we have this Vendredi de la Transition every Friday, but we also have the, the Tuesday of Transition in Lausanne, okay. and, and so it will begin in, uh, rapidly in, the, in the, the, the whole region. And what do you think that um, a currency as an identity card of the movement could make join the movement? Yeah, I think, that, I think that could be a really nice thing that people have in common. One of the beauties of a local currency is that, is, is that anybody can, can use it without feeling that they have to adopt a particular political or philosophical approach. So ideally, one of the reasons that local currencies work so well is, that, is, is when they was when there is the minimum of barriers to people getting involved. So if people say, uh, here's a local currency, just use it, it's really easy. But if you say, here's a local currency, it's for pe if you get involved, you're also getting involved in transition. Well, what's transition? Do I agree with transition? I'm not sure. 
and then maybe maybe it puts another barrier in place. But I think you're, I think what you'll find is maybe without making that explicit, what you will find over time is that is that maybe that just evolves automatically without it having to be explicitly uh, stated. Thank you. Uh, last question. Um, if you have uh, three thoughts, three ideas for, or three hopes for the Le Mans, what would you say? Uh, so one would be that uh, there's a lovely, there's a transition group in London who, uh, who run a, mar a market and they once said to me, I asked, why do you do this? And they said, because we want our children to grow up thinking that this is normal. So for me, my first hope would be that the children of people who are using the Le Mans uh, just grow up thinking that it's completely normal, that you have a complimentary currency on your phone, that you only spend locally. That's really important. Second thing I would hope is that it really uh, uh, invites people to be Im imaginative uh, and it helps people to imagine a future beyond business as usual because business as usual is just is going to kill us. Is going to kill us. We have to come up with something beyond business as usual. Our local currency is a really powerful way of 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 helping to imagine a new world. And the third thing I would hope is that uh, that, that Le Mans is always is, is sharing its learnings, is learning from the experience of other local currencies, but is also sharing what it learns with other people, so that in two or three years' time, people will be able to come up with something even better than Le Mans, which, you, which at the moment you can't imagine, but which in two or three years' time, uh, they will be able to imagine, and then that will be really powerful. Thank you. My pleasure, thank you.